Endpoint Amp Analysis, SFEI Car. This one's going to be a cool one, but first and foremost, there's some Talos links. Check them out. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. Um, so in this example, we are going to look at how IOCs can alert um, to potential malware problems, leveraging device trajectory. We've seen this before. We'll also look at leveraging uh, some of the mitigation techniques. Uh, we haven't really done a lot of this, right? So this will include application blocking, simple detection, um, and IP blacklist. Attackers are looking to persist and target using advanced capabilities. This includes targeting executives, HR, finance, development, etc. Right, All of which have access to confidential data and obviously become a target. The attack starts when a victim opens a PDF file that exploits CVE 2010-2883, the Adobe Sing Table Parsing Stack Buffer Overflow, a zero-day vulnerability that was exploited in the wild in September of 2010. So old, but relevant, right? It shows you the process. Uh, we will show you how AMP Endpoint can detect and remediate the threat. Um, at the end of the day, right, uh, we're going to send a file. We're going to make it enticing for the user to click on. It might be called something like invoice XYYY, um, but it's easy enough to get many people to do this, right? So let's peel this one back and have a look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into um, our dashboard. We're going to go into inbox device trajectory. We can see we're already there. And the first thing we do, we start scrolling across and we look to see uh, elements that are highlighted in yellow. Uh, these are indicators of compromise, right? So we can see that we've got a couple, right? Uh, right out of the gate. Okay, so we have a remote access client IOC triggered. If we look to the left a little bit, we can also see an Adobe compromise. Um, never a good thing, obviously. Um, and then just previous to this, we can also see uh, Adobe, uh, the vulnerabilities tied to that version. So probably something that was leveraged to take advantage of the system. Okay, so let's have a look here. So the first thing we can see here is the key logger. And if we look above here, we can also see the remote access Trojan. Okay, we can see that they both were not quarantined either. If we scroll back a little bit, we can see that the uh, the key logger was actually created by spools V and executed by spools V, right? So very interesting that spools V would be executing and creating files, right? And what we'll find is um, the remote access Trojan has really the same symptom, right? As uh, executed by spools V, right? So something's going on with spools V. Let's have a look here. We know and we can see that it's clean at this point but we can also see that it's made some outbound connections and look at this right very interesting that it's made an outbound connection um, as such so now we know that spools v created the, the the files of interest we know that spools v also made an outbound connection at this point again not something that you would see spools v do um, here we can see that a uh, EI car file was created by a file 14. And if we look at EI car, we can see that it's certainly malicious, right? If we go to 14, though, um, we can see that it's clean. Now, what we can do is we can go to file analysis. And from file analysis, what we can do is uh, ask for the file to be submitted to ThreatGrid. Um, there's things that we can do to automate some of this as well, depending on the file, low prevalence, type, etc. In this case, we're going to fetch the file and submit to get the report. Now, this is a demo environment, so I'm not going to be able to show you the details here, but we've seen the report in other examples. The other thing that we can do is we can pivot to virus total. Now, we don't use virus total in determining the disposition. It just gives you some additional insight into what others may be seeing. So pretty cool, right? We can see this created by 14, this, this uh, file that is malicious. We continue to move along here. We continue to investigate. And the other thing we're going to do in this scenario, right? We're going to go through and we're going to do some uh, blocking as well. We haven't done that in other videos. So if we look at 14, what we can do is, is very quickly just start to scroll across. We can see that check disk exe created it well that's odd right 
something that uh, check discs certainly shouldn't be doing and, and an indication of we have some type of injection taking place here. We can also see that the file was created by check disk as well, right? Okay, well, we know that it's it's doing some executions, it's doing some creations. And here we can see an outbound connection. All right, these are behaviors that check disk certainly shouldn't be doing. And look at this. Here we got check disk.exe being executed by a.exe. So certainly not uh, something that we're expecting um, and we'll continue to move forward. So let's look at the a.exe and we can see very quickly again, virus total, what's its perspective? We can see that you know, there's a couple that have detected it. Um, at this point, let's follow through on a.exe and we can see here a couple files created by a.exe. And what we're gonna see is uh, there's a couple unknown files uh, created and then we're going to see that uh, obviously it creates a one of concern for sure which is uh, a remote access trojan and these were all created by a.exe so okay we know that what we need to do now is let's trace this back a little bit where did it all start so as we scroll back we can see that adobe uh, was leveraged right it made a couple of outbound connections okay so pretty cool and then it created the a.exe file. Okay, we already know that this is a problem. We can pivot now to file trajectory. This shows us everything that's happened from more of a network type uh, focus as opposed to device uh, centric focus, which is device trajectory. So again, it's another view of the data. We can also pull additional assets that may also have been infected by this. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? Now we know that Adobe pulled in. We saw the vulnerability earlier. Um, what can we do? Well, we could very quickly right-click the file of interest, right? In this case, the bad Adobe application or vulnerable, maybe I should say. And we're gonna add it to an application blacklist. So once we do that, now the application, although it won't stop it from downloading, it will stop it from executing. So it won't run on the PC anymore, right? Once they get the policy update. Okay, so that's one step. Now we've kind of mitigated that vulnerable application. Now we can go and look at a.exe and we can create a simple detection. So this is just taking that uh, uh, item, right? That SHA-256 and just saying, if you see this, block it. Pretty easy. The next thing we can do is, we saw that outbound connection earlier. So why not just take that IP address, create a custom uh, uh, blacklist, and use device flow correlation to minimize that threat. So what we're gonna do is, we'll create that IP blacklist. We can use a file, like a list of IP addresses here. We pick the type, which will be blacklist. And we could, we could just enter in the IP here, but I obviously created the file just to show you. So you browse to the file, then you save it. And that's it, right? Now we've blocked that vulnerable application. We've killed a.exe and we've stopped communication channels outbound using that IP address. Sure, we did some digging deep from an analysis perspective, but we also used the tools to mitigate that risk. Pretty cool stuff. Again, not something that you would see Spools V do.